All right, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you joining us in this session. And I, I started sharing my screen just a second ago, which was messing up uh, Ben just a second ago. Uh, as he said, I'm in a conference, and one of the classes that I give in this conference is called Drone to Maps. I'm gonna use a couple of slides from, from, from that particular presentation to get this one started. All right, so we're here for photo capture fundamentals. Uh, you know, as, as he said, and I'm using this cheesy new picture of my flight path. <laughs> he took a picture when I was standing out to Sydney not too long ago. So that's my drone path. <laughs> anyway, I, I have to have cheesy stuff like that. All right, so we're here for Carlson photo capture. And, you know, I, I, I was feeling some questions this morning about this particular topic. And, you know, one of the questions I get often is, does this work with any drone? You know, can, can I use any drone? The answer is yes. Yes, you, you can use any drone. Uh, some of the, the samples that you see there uh, were flown different types of drones, to be honest with you. Uh, there is mine there, which I think they flew with something like a, I think it was a DJI Matrice uh, 600, something like that. Uh, we just got a little sample uh, data out of that. The one in the middle, it's a friend of mine, he has the DJI RTK drone. So I was flown with DJI. The one in the bottom, which uh, some of you, if you have our Carson desktop, this is a different angle of our brand new Carson 2023 splash screen, right? This the side looks look from a different angle, but it's that side. That was flown with an hotel, uh, an hotel Evo 1. So when it comes to drones, yeah, it could be that, it could be a Wintra, it could be an EV, it could be something different. As long as you have uh, the pictures and they are geotagged, we can use any kind of drones. Uh, other sensors too, you know, there, there's there's other sensors that could be used potentially. Now, when I like when I do this presentation, one of the things that I like to talk about is what are we trying to get out of the flight? You know, as I said, I'm just using this morning, that's one of the questions that I fielded. Uh, some of us are flying drones just to get an ortho image, uh, something that we can have as an underlay when we deliver our CAD files, right? Some of us are doing it for topography, so we want to get some extra shots, and that's also okay. Some of us, and that's that's one of the things that I do, especially in my conferences, is feature extraction, you know, curves, uh, parking lines, color lines, paint markings, things like that. Uh, some of us, when I do this for, for our mining customers, a lot of volume calculations, inspections, profiles, things like that. But we also do it for inspection, right? Uh, we might have thermal sensors in our drones. Uh, we do a lot of work with uh, crime scene investigation. I, maybe some of you guys know that Carson has uh, a division for that. So, so we actually have CSI software. It's kind of cool when you say it's CSI software. So it, it depends on what you're doing. But all along, you know, one of the things that gels everything together will be our photo capture software. Now, full disclosure, you know, in the payloads, I have camera, uh, LiDAR, and thermal. Well, Right now, our photo capture, we're working uh, with Primero cameras, but uh, kind of a heads up, a little later this year, we are coming out with a brand new version of the software that will have a potential mix in uh, both the pictures and LiDAR sensors, so kind of the best of both worlds. So, so looking forward for that update again later this year. All right, so why, why do I start here? Because one of the key questions that, that I, or one of the key things that I'd like to talk about is ground sampling distance. So it is really about you, you get what you get based on the altitude of flight, right? So for instance, uh, we'll show from a photo capture point of view for, for this particular webinar, but if you guys are familiar with some of the other classes that I give, uh, there's a point cloud class where I like to fly low, and I will fly the drone very low, so we can actually do feature extraction. We can get the curves and things like that. That won't happen in photo capture. That will happen in the point cloud software, the Carson point cloud software. But you know, keep it in mind, uh, you know, that altitude uh, at which you fly your drone will affect your GSD ground sampling distance. So the smaller the number you have on the GSD, the more accurate you're gonna have, or Sorry, I shouldn't say more accurate. Uh, chances are that you will be able to do a little bit more of the feature extraction later. Now, there's basic feature extraction we will show that happens, that can happen in, in our photo capture software, right? So keep that in mind. Now, when, when I get asked the question, so what do you mean about AGL and GSD? So just give an idea, uh, using the hotel, the, this Evo 2, which is the one that you, know, you guys know we're selling now, uh, that hotel is a 20 megapixel camera with one inch uh, sensor, a CMOS. Sensor. 
so if you fly in that sweet spot 120 to 130 feet in altitude, your GSD will be in the range of about 300 of a foot. So horizontally, you're going to be in that range of 300 of a foot, which means that vertically, you're going to be in the range of about a tenth, you know. And, and of course, we all know that you, you need to set up ground control and, you know, there'll be a little acceleration drifting towards the edges and so on and so forth. So maybe on the edges, it might be a couple of tenths, you know. But generally speaking, you'll be within a tenth, less than a tenth at that altitude of flight. If you fly 180, now your GSD will probably be in the range of 500 or so. You know, it depends. Maybe you're 200 feet, so you might be at 700, 800. So now think about your elevation will be probably in the two tenths uh, range. Nothing wrong about that. It's just a matter of what do you want to get out. I can feature extraction, fly low, 120 feet. That's 120, 130. That's that's the sweet spot, right? So just just as a as a quick reference on that. Uh, you know, some of our mining customers they ask me the question. So would you fly a mine that low? And my answer is of course not. I would fly a mine at 200, 250. You know, because for the accuracy that we're looking for long calculations, stockpile long calculations, we're okay with that. And again, it also depends on the sensor. Uh, for instance, the Whisper, uh, different drone that we also sell, it's, it's uh, you know, we have a 60 megapixel camera. We can fly at 300, 400 feet, and we'll, we're going to get a really good ground sampling distance, GSB. All right, so I think this is a little bit for, for the other presentation that I'm doing, so a little bit of field work, the airspace and all that. But, you know, with that said, let's go ahead and fly it. And Ben knows that I like to do my little cheesy videos. So we're going to use this data set to, to go through a little bit of what can happen with the software. All right, so off we go. We flew it. All right, let me close out of the PowerPoint. And I hope you guys are not doing the, oh, did he really? <laughs> All right, so this is an example. I mean, this is uh, one of the flights that I did of that side when, where I showed the video. Uh, just trying to do what we call an orbital data set. Now, I'm going to focus on mapping, right? But this will be a result. Uh, I flew this kind of to get the, the south facade of that building, just to get that 3D model. But normally, we're going to fly more in the range of trying to get something like this. So mapping purpose, you know, mapping grade, if you wish. So we switch over to this one here. And that's really the flight that I had before, right? So we have something like this. So how do we get here? All right, so let's start from, from the top. Let's go into our create. And one thing to know, by the way, guys, is there are two versions of Carson Photo Capture. The one that I'm using for this presentation is the standalone version of Photo Capture, which means this is running from my computer, right? This is running from my laptop. There is an online version of the software, so all you need to have is a browser. So if you're concerned about what kind of computer do I need to have to work with this, if you go for the online version, you don't have to worry about uh, hardware, per se. Now, full disclosure, uh, I think I'm using the standalone on my laptop. Full disclosure, my laptop, I have 64 gigs of RAM. That would be my recommendation. You know, 32 gigs of RAM is fine. I, I prefer as much as you can. 64 is what I have. So when you look at everything that I'm doing, that's the computer that I'm running. All right. So how do we start? So one of the great things about photo capture is we're going here, click on create, and then you start answering some basic questions, right? The first question here would be name. So I'm going to call this one uh, photo capture webinar, something like that. Cool. Then we ask you for the output, output unit of measure, right? So this is going to be, in this case, U.S. survey foot. Uh, if you're one of our international customers in this session, you might be working meters, and that's perfectly okay. So just use whatever you need to use on your side. I'm going to use U.S. survey feet. All right. Now, here's the thing. And if you're learning photo capture right now, this is the one place where I make a note. I am not going to select the output coordinate system right now. Now, the reason for that is because I'm going to upload the images in a moment. So when I upload the images, we're going to read the system, the coordinates from the pictures, right? So don't need to worry about this. We're going to read it from the other. So let me go here. I'm going to go find to my raw data. Let's bring some, some images here. I'm not going to bring everything, of course, but uh, let's grab. Let's do, this is the library. We just, I was showing you just a second ago. Let me grab maybe just a few from the parking lot area, kind of that area. Let's grab a handful, not, not a lot, something like that. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you here kind of the location of the images. And you notice that it immediately said, oh, 
California Zone 6. So this is a place about a mile from my, my place. And I'm in Southern California, by the way. So California Zone 6. So Natty 3, 2011. Perfect. This is exactly what I needed to, to see. Fantastic. Now, this is coming from a drone, so that's my platform. Uh, I could say it's an airplane, so you have six wings, high altitude flight, then you click on that. Uh, we've had some customers say, hey, what if I have uh, an iPhone 14 and I want to walk around something and take some pictures? The answer is yes, that, that also works. Uh, I would be careful on how you do it. They, they need to be geotagged, but you know, you turn that the geotag and the images on the iPhone, and then that's going to work, right? So uh, the accuracy, you know, the precision is going to be a little different, of course. But you know, just so you know. All right, so we have this here, perfect. Okay, a couple of tricks about the map view that you see here. So you notice I'm in map view, it's showing me the location of the site. This looks fine. Okay, and one thing I can do is I can click here. So blue means included image. You can click on it, left click on it, and it turns it into an excluded image. So if we had a ton of images here that we don't need to use, we will go quickly and say, well, I don't need this one, I don't need that one, and maybe have some overlaps, and you can clean it up and you know process a little less image or something. And that's a good thing sometimes. All right, how about ground control? Well, we always want ground control. Now, can photo capture process your data without ground control? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so if you're looking just for a quick ortho, and I, I've been known to do that too, where I'll fly it without ground control, because I just want a quick ortho to show an aerial to show basically, I, I'll just press it without run control. But from a mapping point of view, uh, if you want the accuracy, if you want the elevations to be correct and all that, yes, you definitely need to have ground control. So just to be clear, regardless of RTK or non-RTK drone, even with the RTK drone, I will have ground control. So let me bring the ground control that I use with this file. So what I did is I clicked down here under add ground control. Now, different ways of bringing it in. Land XML file, uh, depending on what field software you have, if you run out with a Genesis receiver, you might want to export it as an XML file, or maybe you had it in CAD and you want to export that as an XML file, that's fine. Text file, which is usually what I use. Uh, CRD, CRDD, which is the Carlson uh, surf -E, surf -E -C format, or manually, this is the one that I never recommend to use. Because you're going to type in all the numbers, and chances are you might make a mistake. Uh, I mean, I'm speaking for experience. I, I'm the one that makes the typos. All right, so I'm going to click here on text file, and I'm going to select North and Easting. Unit of measure, I did this in US Army feet. Perfect. Now, coordinate system, and this is a question I get all the time. So notice that I clicked on that field, and it opened up this little pull down, right? This list menu here. So immediately it suggests, hey, your images were done in California Zone 6. Is your ground control in California Zone 6? And in my case in particular, yes, they were. All I have to do is click California Zone 6. But I also get questions, uh, you know, especially with our construction customers where we might see the situation where, you know, surveyors set up control for the project and for the construction uh, point of view, they set up 5,000, 5,000, right? That's okay. All you have to do is say, okay, it's a local coordinate system, and we're going to go localize it, right? So that's all you have to do. Click here, local coordinate system. Again, I'm using ground control that was set up in the same state plan coordinate system, right? Okay, so the next thing we do is we browse, and I'm going to browse here to my folder, and that's where I have all my GCPs. There we go. And there we are. Perfect. Now, I, I just brought in a handful of the pictures, so you notice that there's a lot more. Now, here's what happens. Then you see. AT, so AT for me is aerial target, so AT1, two, three, four, and I might just label things when I'm on in the field, right? So notice that there's some that I call checkpoints. Maybe I have a couple of checkpoints, and I would do something like this, right? I mean, this particular case, I might say, well, the checkpoints, that one doesn't seem to be the right place, but you can always exclude them. Now, another way of doing it is I'll finalize here. It's once confirmed that I can see my ground control around the images in the same map, right? So if that's true, I can do something like that. All right, same thing. I can click one time on that ground control marker, make it a checkpoint, click again, I can exclude it. And we can do that quickly on the other. Let's just browse, move around here like so. Exclude that, exclude that, exclude that, exclude that. Real we'll quick, let's do something like that. There we go. Exclude all of those like so, and perfect. There we are. Now you notice up here, I've had a couple of messages here asking me, do you want, to, sorry, do you want to crop the images? So if you had a, a much larger flight, let's say you had, you know, 
300 acres of a site, but you're only interested in the aerial and, and getting the point cloud within a smaller area, smaller zone, if you wish. You want to use this cropping and then remove as many images as you can and just leave the little segment where you're focusing for, for your project, right? So that's what this little crop would do. Now, once we're ready, and let's assume that we're ready here, right? So once we're ready, we can go in here and say create, click on that, and there we go. Okay. So you, normally everybody asks me the question, so do I need to do anything else? What, what else needs to happen with photo capture? The answer is nothing else. Uh, if you're flying something like a DJI drone, a hotel drone, a wind truck, uh, you know, uh, an EV, you know, the, what I would refer to as the known drones, the common drones, right? Then there's nothing else you need to do. All you need to say, acknowledge here. Um, coordinate system looks fine. You know, measure looks fine. So you say, go ahead, build, go ahead and create. Click on that button and you're good to go. Right, but we're here for training, right? So you notice that there's this advanced fields, right? Now I, I want to point out the fact that this is optional. You don't need to do this all the time. Please do, do not think that you have to stop here. Again, you have an hotel Evo. Upload the images. Upload your ground control. Hit create. You're good to go. That's all you need to do. Don't worry about anything else. Now. The reason we have this advanced field is sometimes we're going to fly with not a known drone. We're running software that have custom drones, uh, you know, custom built drones. So what we ask you is we don't know your sensor. So we need to know information. So what do we need to know? Well, what is the principal point for the camera? So give us that information. Maybe it's a brand new drone that we still don't have the information. So you can still process, find the principal point, give us that information here. There's going to be millimeters. And we can process with that. If it's an RTK drone, again, it's not in our list. Uh, let us know. You know, maybe it's some, some commercially available drone that we were not aware of. Let us know, and we'll we'll add it to our list. So the other thing is, it's an RTK. We need to know the GPS accuracy. You know, maybe it's a three millimeters or three centimeters X, Y, and Z or whatever it is. You know, you'll have that from your manufacturer. So let us know that information and the focal length. Right, but that's the things that you would get out of a custom drone, or as I said, me a brand new drone that we're not aware of. So that's the only time that I would come in here to into that advanced field, right? Otherwise, I'm not doing anything here. Now there is a second reason sometimes. You know, I, I've been using the wording here of the mining customers, or the mining customers. Well. When I've done this with mining customers, when I've done this with construction companies, uh, maybe they're not looking for that survey map grade, you know? So when that happens, maybe we're flying this to get stockpile volumes, right? We're not looking at this from a, I'm gonna do a top on 35 something ALTA or something like that, right? So what we can do is change the cloud density, right? So low, uh, think of it as a sparse model, right? so it's a less, it's not a dense point cloud, it's a less dense or a sparse model, right? We call that a low. What happens then is we're going to change dramatically the processing time, you know? So instead of having, you know, let's say 1,000, 2,000 images, it's going to take a few hours to go through, well, we click on this, it might take just a handful of minutes. You know, maybe we go from five hours to one hour. Now, little side, that, that the one that I have in here, just full disclosure with the number of pictures that I took uh, with the drone, this process is in my computer less than an hour, right? So we're not talking two days or anything like that. We're just talking an hour or two. But this, again, changing cloud density will make it a little even faster. We're not going for that full dense point cloud. So that, that would be a change that I would do if I'm looking at stockpile volume. Maybe we're looking at quick site calculation, airport calculation. So I might click that and change that. So that, that's what happens in there. So we'll keep it at normal. All right. The next one is what we call the ortho GSD multiplier. Oh, hey, so remember that thing that I started with, the ground sampling distance. So again, if I flew, just give you an idea, for, with this library, I flew at 130. I just wanted to be a little higher than the roof of the building. I feel like this is a little more clear, so give you another 10 feet of clearance, right? So I flew at 130. Now, so my GSD for that particular flight was 300 of a foot. Now, I flew it, full disclosure, to do curb extraction. And I wanted to do it for line extraction. So some of the other stuff that we do in our point cloud software. But if I had flown it just for the ortho, then I could have said, I don't need the ortho to be at the same accuracy, right? So I don't need that ortho to be 300 of a foot. Maybe I just need it as a reference. So I could go 600 of a foot or one tenth. That's what we change here. So 
what happens with that? What is the, the effect of that? The effect of that is the processing will be potentially, and I, I, I do this with big air quotes here, potentially a little bit faster. But more importantly, the, the ortho image is going to be significantly smaller because we just changed the resolution of the ortho image by using that value here. Now, if you're making notes, if you're taking notes, here's my recommendation. I'm sorry, there's some people that just walked in here. So I don't know if you were hearing that noise, and I apologize for that. All right. So what about this one? So what's my recommendation? My recommendation is always go on. You know, you never know. We do have an option in photo capture that after you have processed, if you wanted to change the resolution of the ortho so to make it, you know, I can change the resolution from 300 of a foot to let's say 600 of a foot, right? Horizontally, then change it later. You know, always process that one. You know, maybe it's a little slower, but you know, it's worth a while as opposed to you change it here and can go back to a more accurate after the fact, right? So, so normally you tell everybody don't change anything here. So that's really what you're changing the resolution of the ortho image. So keep it at one, but again, if you know it's only the ortho, it's only a reference, there you go. Okay, uh, what else? Out of this one, the other things that I focus on are. Then some some cluster, and this is always on, guys. But just keep it in mind. Uh, what it is is the way we process all the images. For instance, my little data set here. I can't remember how many pictures I had. Actually, I should check, but you know, probably about 150 something like that. I wouldn't worry about it. Now, if I had something like 5,000 images, if I have a 400 acre site, right? Then I might think about this one. You know, that's the point in time where we might actually want to start clustering. You know. It's, it's, I was kind of funny, but it's kind of the technical term. So we might actually do a little of that. Uh, it might take a little longer to process, and then we might want to use tie points and everything, right? So that's the only time where I might consider it. Normally, I don't. I always keep that on, and it's more of an after the fact. If I see any issues or something's not working okay, then I might come back and change this one. And then finally, this one, use unreconstructed ortho. So uh, camera in the ortho. So what it is, is we've all flown areas where you have water, you know, maybe a pond or maybe something else, uh, heavy vegetation sometimes. And if you fly very low when there's a lot of tree canopy, uh, the reconstruction algorithm is going to have an issue. And you've seen it, you know, whether it's our software or any other software, it doesn't understand how to reconstruct. You know, you're too close. One leaf is not that different from the next leaf, so on and so forth. I mean, it's heavy canopy. We end up with a hole in the ortho image, you know, that little hole, you, we've all seen it. So what we do in that case is we turn this on and we tell the software, hey, go and do your reconstruction. Now you find an area where you, you know, that this leaf is not different to the next one, so on and so forth. So you cannot do the reconstruction, the pixelation out of it, right? Then what we can say is, okay, time out, just grab one of the images from that side, just the, the normal drone picture and fill the gap. You know, just so you see the hole. And that's all it is. It just fixes the hole. It's not going to be ortho reconstructed in that specific point. That's all that happens there. It's just, but again, you'll get a hole. So, so it's kind of a new thing to do. I normally have it off. I it normally not find areas with heavy camp here, a lot of water. But uh, so I lit on it. But that's all that happens there. Once we have it, basically, we just click on create. And off it goes. Now, not only it's going to load images that have scopes through a little processing, something else that we call bundle adjustments, right? And oh, I clicked on it. Sorry, I, I was about to say I'm not going to click on it, but whatever. So let's do it. Oh, I picked just 21, so it should be fairly fast. So what the software is doing right now, it's kind of setting up the puzzle. I, that's that's my layman's term. You know, I'm not as smart as Ben. <laughs> ben Vanderjack, our, our lead for CPC. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the images. We're going to look at your ground control, and we do this thing that's called bundle adjustment, right? So we're looking at all the math. We're trying to figure out all the pictures and so forth. And this is going to take a second or two. Luckily, I just picked 21 images, so and three ground controls, so it should be fairly fast. Now, normally what I do, FYI, uh, this is the point where I'm not leaving my computer yet, right? And if I had a thousand images, I'd go grab a cup of coffee and come back, right? This might take a couple of minutes. So it's just kind of the FYI. Normally, it's about a minute or so. Uh, then what happens, once we get to 75%, we're going to ask you for the next step, which is uh, adjust or correct uh, the ground targets with your ground control, right? So we need to do a little of that. We're almost there. We're going to get a little message in a second. All right. So once we get it, we're going to do that little correction. And at that point in time, that's when you literally go and do something else. 
uh, if you have the standalone, again, it depends on the number of images, maybe a couple of hours, uh, you have a few thousand images, it might be one of those that, you know, do it at the end of the day, leave the computer running, right? Okay, so I got my message. I can go now to the correct reference page. 